Now let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's work, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out an outstanding letter every Monday morning with updates throughout the week right on the front page of TFNN. Hit that newsletter tab. tab. Check out the Tiger Forex Report. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. You can't go wrong. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How are you? I'm doing well, man. How about yourself? Uh, we got an ice storm brewing in Chicago, so I'm doing all right just hunkering down today. <laughs> Boy, ice storm in Chicago. What does that mean for temperatures for you guys, man? Like single digits, uh, teens, negatives? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, I think, a high of, well, it'll be a high of like 30, 32, something right around the freezing later on today. Okay. But right now it's in the 20s. Yeah, it's going to oh, be man. cold and brisk. With that wind chill, so, I'm sure. Yeah, Chicago, exactly. windy city. Uh, so, Teddy, where do we kick things off, man? We got some action. Things kind of progressing. Somewhat the way we've been talking about with yields maybe catching a little bit of a bid. We're seeing a reversal of some of the trends this year. But what do you think of the action we've got over the last few days with this market and yields and currencies accordingly? Well, you know, it was a holiday market week. So definitely uh, the volatility yesterday was uh, it was kind of nice to see that. You don't usually see that much uh, I mean, action, especially with the way yields moved yesterday. And we took out a December low. So I think that you have to really pay attention to what's going on with the yield curve right now. Yeah, what do you think of the fact of where the market is with still where the yields are in terms of getting to where we were in December versus the market still in a you know, somewhat elevated basis, um, even where we were? Quite the run up into January, we've had quite a pullback of what, four or four and a half percent even in the S&Ps in a few days, but still mm -hmm. elevated with yields kind of above where they are on that, on that basis. Mm -hmm. Well, right now we're definitely falling on good support for yields. If we get a bounce, I would say over the next couple of days, it wouldn't be shocking. But I would, right now, considering we're coming off of a higher move high and we made a, a lower move low on a you know weekly basis with the bonds and the ten-year, I think you really have to look at at best a neutral trade. So it's a sell rally forecast for that, meaning that I would be very cautious buying into uh, you know thinking that you're going to have any type of lower yield trend going into the, like the next few weeks or even the next couple of months. I think it's going to be the opposite where we're going to be pushing yields higher for the next few months for sure. Yeah, it looks like that's the case, right? Pretty interesting to see where we go two or three months down the line with the data that we've been getting. Uh, the dollar index, what do you think of the pop we've gotten there at a price point of about 104 in the dollar index off of the lows of about 100 and change, almost 101? Well, I like the high that was set on Friday. I think short term that the dollar probably will t hit support a little bit. I mean, today we have a kind of a mixed bag of goods. There's a lot of divergence going on in a lot of the currencies. And you also have like, for instance, like the U.S. dollar Swiss trade, which is becoming just a nightmare of a range trade. You know, so the more of these currencies that are becoming range trade, you know, markets right now, you're not going to have much of an impact by, say, like the euro or the pound or other, you know, uh, currencies, you know, as far as making the dollar index move. So the dollar index is becoming a very rough gauge. Short term, I like the high from Friday. I'm not, I'm not uh, bearish the dollar, but I think right now it's a good chance to see a little bit of a correction in the dollar. You know, especially when it comes to like the euro and the pound. You know, moving forward. But with the Fed stance, you know, obviously people are going to be waiting on the minutes. You know, and I think that what we've been talking about for the past couple of months which has been contrary to the main consensus is that the Fed's going to kind of go in line with what we've been talking about. And that is that um, they're not going to be as aggressive as they have been, you know, over the past year and especially starting out last year. But um, the hawkishness isn't over. This, the data doesn't support anything for them to really <clears throat> pull back the reins, let alone this theory of possibly cutting rates at the end of the year. Yeah, that one might finally be out of the bag. It depends how we get some data over the next month or two. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw Bullard out there again, I think, this morning on CNBC saying, you know, why I just want to get there as fast as possible in terms of his terminal rate of 5.3. Whether we get there or not, the data is still going to persist, man. And we got, you know, retail sales 3%. 500,000 plus jobs added. And we get that PCE on Friday. We see interesting mm -hmm. to see as do, when you look at economic data, Teddy, I know there's so much of it, of course, across the globe. But where we are right now, inflation is so important. Something like the PCE, I know CPI is an important number. We've had to talk to our man Kevin Hicks many times, you know, just on an equity perspective, right? The data that drives everything. Uh, Non-farm payrolls, of course, a mammoth one across the board. But is the PCE, when you're trading Forex, the dollar with yields are right now, is that something you're looking forward to on Friday? Does that drive some of the action? 
Um, I, I think th it has some bearing. I don't think it's as strong as when you look at the major numbers like CPI or unemployment um, okay. or PPI. I do think it has an influence, you know, but I kind of look at it like the Michigan sentiment where if it comes out radically unexpected, that's where you might see a knee jerk reaction from a number like that. But otherwise, yes. it's just it's not that it doesn't mean anything, but it's just a number that comes out that you use as kind of a supportive gauge, if you will, for any trend that's in place. Is that Michigan number out Friday as well? I think it might be. Uh, Michigan no? sentiment. Yeah. They may, no, is it this week or next I think it may be, folks. I think it may. Yeah. I'm not certain. Um, what about the yen, Teddy? Let's jump to the yen. Sure, sure. So let's look at the yen. Well, with the yen, uh, let's see. We have... You know, yesterday it was definitely getting nice and strong, trying to lift the bid. Today it's pulling back, and that's where we have this choppiness in the dollar. Um, the yen is one of the currencies I think that you're going to see a trend still, but it's it's not going to be an aggressive trend just because we have the whole you know transfer of uh, leadership with the BOJ coming up in the next couple of months. You know, I mean they haven't pulled the trigger yet, so that means that we don't know when it's going to happen. We just know that they're very likely to. So, but the market right now is saying, well, until they you know have this change over in leadership, you know, it's it's more bullish the U.S. dollar yen right now for uh, any type of trend. You know, you have to look at when we came off the highs from, you know, months ago, that's still a correction in the long term. Overall, the U.S. dollar yen has been in, the, in a very, very strong bull trend, you know. So right now we're, we're at that kind of like stage where we're trying to figure out is, what we just recently had, was it a correction or are we looking to have this, you know, this next leg up where that becomes it falls short of the highs and then we start the bear market for the U.S. dollar yen, which is a very viable, um, you know, chance if, if the new leadership becomes aggressive. You know, now I don't think that the BOJ is going to ever be as aggressive as we were or the ECB or other central banks like that. But let's say they, they take off to just like the quarter point, half point kind of like leaning initially and stuff and say that let's say they say that they're going to be fight, trying to fight inflation. That would mean you can, might see a quarter point raise, you know, by the BOJ three, four times in the course of a year. That would be a big deal, you know, and that would also that would mean that the U.S. dollar yen trade would probably be not necessarily bearish. But I think that the, the bull rally may be actually kind of over. You know, so I think we are setting a case for a very large range trade, um, but the, the high may be in. You know, the only thing I could see that would change that that kind of scenario is if our Fed got super aggressive, um, which then would outweigh anything the BOJ does. And then you might see new, you know, multi month highs. But it's very possible that the top is in. It's just a matter of now are we going to correct and find that next best selling point for the super long term trend or. OK. Are we, you know, you know, you know, what I'm saying like it's a matter yes, of like definitely. what are the central banks going to do, you know? So we're kind of at that inflection point. But I'm bullish right now. The U.S. dollar yen. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I have the chart up here in terms of that entire run up from 115 to 150, and we back off to 130, <laughs> and then you're at 135. And which way is the actual trend shaping up um, on this chart? Teddy, I appreciate the segment as always. The time, man. I appreciate the Tiger Forex report. Please, folks, check it out. You heard the reason why you should sign up, man. It's shaping so much of this action. We got another week, man. Always interesting to see what will be next Wednesday. Have a great one, Teddy. We'll talk to you on Wednesday, You too. Man. Thanks, okay, Tommy. Thanks higher, so much. higher yields. <laughs> higher yields. Can't argue with that one right now, man. Thanks, Teddy. We'll be right back to finish out the program, folks.